ready there. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a song like, uh, you're familiar with, let's say, what's a standard, a nine-pound hammer? Oh, nine-pound hammer. Give me another good. one. Maybe did you uh, hear one? Old Home Place, any of those type of songs or something, okay. whatever you're well, leaning we'll towards. start out with, actually, before I even go into a full detailed song, I want to show you some chord inversions over G. Let's just work with G. Cool. Okay. That's what I would like to work out of. Because once a guy learns a bass out of that key, you can pretty much handle one of the other key, just, you know, you know transpose it in a different key. Right. I'll show you how to do that, too. But okay. What I'm going to do is take G, C, and D and add some color to it, okay? Cool. All right, we'll play it straight with it first. That's really nice. 
Uh, now, this cord is very valuable. Let me point this out because what you can do with this cord is take a, a really traditional bluegrass song and just kind of soften it up and jazz it up at the same time, but not too jazzy. Right. It just it puts a little of warmth to a song, like any given to nine pound hammer. <laughs> you always use on your breakdowns from back into a G a lot of your songs will be, that's, that I guess that's it or sometimes you're coming up to a higher register I guess or maybe 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 primarily that's where you do it okay I'll I just remember it. it's kind of a, a breakdown at the end of a chorus getting ready to go into the next verse that's nice okay this is like the remaining half upper half of an F chord okay so I'm knowing the F note and the uh That'd be the D note of the of the B string. And I play these three strings only, the fourth, third, and second, so you get this sound. Okay. And then I make it the remaining half of a C, and then open uh, fourth, third, and second. Like that. Okay. okay. Now you can also reverse this, and it sounds like this. Places like a, any type of filling or G run, if you will, to have a phrase like. See how it works there? Okay. I noticed you're also using your thumb to get a really nice resonance on like your D forms. Seen down, but I didn't know how to apply it. Now let's go to D again. Okay. Jump back over to D. Now let's uh, put an addition onto this thing we learned earlier. This. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can also play the same chord form. Okay. We just come down to seventh fret. you did there at the end of that phrase right. there. Uh -huh. Okay. Now the C 
secret, what you're probably hearing that I didn't tell you earlier is this. Quick bass and then the strum. Okay. Okay. But it can be, you know, like the attack can be. You know, and then once you get that down, you can add the quick, very quick bass like that. Okay. It's like that. It's, yeah, it's a quick bass and a down strum. Okay. Now, something else I've seen you do before, you, you take these chord forms and like in some of the bluegrass fiddle tunes, you'll, you'll what I call, I guess, the movable chord patterns that you use behind some fiddle tunes. Uh, I don't know exactly, I can't think of one offhand that you guys use all the time, but uh, I guess it's the kind of commonly used... Okay, yeah, that would be like a... Okay, yeah. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I was wanting to learn some of those type of... Uh, swing chords? Uh, swing chords, I guess, is what it is, yeah. Okay, we'll start on that. Okay. Start out with the G. All right. And we'll go up to an A minor, which we can make this form like the same thing I showed you, the D riff. Mm -hmm. Now add your thumb on the uh, bass string. Okay. The fifth string's muted, which gives you this sound. Okay. And that's called a two minor if you're playing on a G. There's one, there's a two minor, three minor will be the B on the seventh fret. Okay. Now that's going to sound like. Now we're going to add a C right here. This is a new version maybe for you. Bar across the uh, seventh fret of the index, middle finger will cover the bass string, second finger on the same fret as the, as the uh, uh, middle finger, which gives you this sound. Oh, okay. You don't have to play the bottom string. If you want, you can. Okay. Okay, now this riff will sound like. Now we reverse it. Okay. Now I'll play that in time for you. Two, three, four. Say you were playing uh, uh, favorite gold brush. Mm -hmm. That's sure. Okay. Some of your breaks uh, out of the key of G, and you're, you're doing some of your more than what I term the Tony Rice sounding sounding leads that you're doing right there in the lower register alone. Is there some chord patterns like what you're doing right there that yeah, I could basically what you do when you're playing that sound you just describe uh, the Clarence White Tony Rice style like what I play. Okay, you will play a G note. Let's say based on there again of G. Like okay, this pattern. I want to show you this pattern, which is really the basics of all of that. Okay. So it starts out on a high G right here, mm -hmm. and you'll find it will go into an F to a pull off on the C sharp. You'll go ahead and note the C note right here mm -hmm. and do this. That's a pull off to a B flat. There's the B flat back to the open C or the closed C. Sorry. slide it up to that position. The reason I do slides uh, into my leads too is because sometimes if you play something head on straight into the note, it sounds a little harsh. Okay. Know? And you can soften things up by just playing a simple slide, you know. It gives you just a little touch of finesse, you know. here 
what you want, like. Is this a real nice blues? Yeah, it's basically blues patterns. And I'll show you an exercise to work on to build your speed up, like with the stuff, like. We started out. Okay. but it's not, it really does. it's just the way they're tied together like this, and I'll go on down even further now. into the C or D. That is yeah. really nice. I yeah, really like that. use that a lot. It fits on a lot of things. It does. It does. Yeah. Now that we've worked, we touched on this a little bit, what we'll do now is uh, let's go up and catch our next register of the same key down in here. Now this is a G triad, which is made like this. It kind of looks like an inverted D chord almost. You got a finger here. And your index here. Covers the G note on the second string. Now I'll show you what you can do with this chord, as well as what we learned down here, the, the movement pattern. Mm -hmm. We'll learn this pattern up here. We'll start on the seventh fret of the fourth string and do this. Simple slide. Give you some ideas. 
is how to come from here back down to here. Now, when you're playing out the lower register once again, are you playing more out of a, in your lead progressions, are you playing more out of like an, uh, a C form? Just or down here. When you're playing your lead, your, like your blues? Just, or more out of a... It kind of bounces around and touches on all keys. Like okay. One note maybe for a split second might be a G, and two or three notes might be out of a C form. Okay. Like... Right there, I'm riding more on a C sharp to, okay. a, to a B flat, which is chromatically speaking, you know, more the chromatics or uh, the uh, more <clears throat> tension style sound, you know. Like right. that. And there's a lot of picking action there too. <laughs> yeah. Another thing. Let me let me add this. Why? Okay. Let's disregard the left hand for a few minutes. Okay. Spend a little time on the right hand. All right. A lot of these licks, <clears throat> and I always tell you know people that I work with and do whatever feels best by right. all means. But like when I'm playing something that's really requiring me to really, you know, uh, illustrate full uh, concentration with my right hand, I find myself playing more down strokes than I do up. Okay. The two reasons: one is because of speed, and the second is because of tone. And it, to me, it makes more practical common sense to to. Uh, Take the fact in that you can play better tone going down than you can coming up. Right. You're working against yourself. Right. You know, you have to pull that pick up constantly. It's very easy to drop the pick <coughs> across the strings. Right. You know, like this. <laughs> Say a riff like that, that's all down strokes. <laughs> I might play an up right there. Okay. Here's another down. Let's see. See, if I tried to play that up this way, see, it's much harder. You just got to really think about what you're doing. I can't believe you can get the down pick in that fast, though. I'll show you a good exercise to work on the up and down movement. Let's go back to Old Home Place. <clears throat> it's a 
big thing I learned from J.D. Crow was, you know, how to, you know, um, raise and lower your volume without standing out too much when you do it. So I can say we're doing all home plays. I'll stop on all the dynamic points, show you what I mean. It's been ten long years since I left my home. Executed right there just a little bit. Right. We're at the top of my age, make the woods roll grass, and the box hunter pulls this horn right here. Okay. So you want the song to pulsate. Okay. See so if you play one set rhythm all the time, you never change it. There's nothing that ever stands out. Right. So right. dynamics usually come, you'll find, in the fill ends of vocals, vocally speaking. Okay. Now, Instrumentally, it may not work the same. Instrumentally, my advice is, for whatever it's worth, is like if you're playing rhythm to another person that's playing lead, uh, you just want to keep the rhythm steady, you know, and like if the, the tune goes into a minor mode of a major mode, there's where you have a chance to exercise dynamics on instrument. So we're doing Blackberry Blossom, how about, how about that? that you just used. Um, could you could you show me some of the names of some of the chords sure, you just yeah, used in there? Because yeah, yeah. okay. that's one of my favorite fiddle tunes, okay, and I've been really right. working hard to learn that one. So uh, that's here's perfect. Here's E minor 7 for the bridge of that tune. That's on the 7th fret there, again, a bar. Okay, and I'm using my middle finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, middle finger on the 2nd string of the 8th fret. There's your basic sound of the chord. Now I add, you can add your pinky or your ring finger, whichever feels best. Now, what's cool about this chord, you don't have to play the 1-5-1 uh, one, one rhythm on this. This has a very flexible pattern to it. So, and what's cool about these chords is when you hit those chords and you hear that sound, and, and to me it just changes the whole rhythmic inflection of it, you know. Right. You can do different things. Okay, so like this chord. Jazz it up some, yeah. yeah. Now let's throw in our B to go with it. Uh, and there's the chord I showed you earlier. Okay. Eleventh. Okay. And just play from here down to the second string. You'd want to stop on the second string on this particular chord. You can hit the bottom string if you want, or top, whichever you want to refer to it. But anyway, it will sound like. There's a, a dynamic standing out on this one. Let's go back to the pick action for a minute. Down okay. the bass to get a bold sound. And up on the second string on up like this. To get more of a snap out of it. Minor 
seven. Okay. Okay, to this B. It's almost like a B seventh minus. Okay. Oh, okay. So that'll sound like.
Cool. Time. Thank you, indeed. That would be that would be a great one to work on as far as uh, learning some nice progressions like that. Well, that's out of key what? What's uh, D? D. Now I want to show you some color chords for like out of C. Okay. So like when you're playing C. Let's say we're playing uh, anything out of C. What's it? Do you do any fiddle tunes like Bowman uh, or any of that stuff? Uh, Liberty. you've had for a while or is that a different well, let's see I've had this one for about uh, well, that stuff with Tony that's been about two or three months ago okay the one that they sent me I sold it and then bought this one 
This is uh, 11 years old here, this one is. It's a really, man, it sounds incredible. Thank you. These strings are the same ones I was playing on probably last week in Under Main. You're kidding played me. played two shows with Carolina since then. That's good sounding box. What model is that compared to the one you had? Is that a... a same model. Same model? Same model. Tony Rice model, yeah. This is in 84, so back then they only had two people working there, so it's probably made in 83. Oh, that's and this piece of 10-year-old German spruce at the time, so... That's beautiful. Yeah, Tony loved this guitar. He wanted to buy it when we were recording together. Did you all do a release? Did, is that it something? Not yet. I'm working on I've just been talking to folks at Rebel about it, so... Oh, that's great. Hopefully in a couple months it should be out. So I think they're going to lease it, so that's good. Because I already had the master finished and paid for all that myself, so... You know, maybe they'll release it. Yeah. Let's get their uh, distribution off my hands, you know. I like that. And I'm going to show you how to do these snap type things like this is kind of counterpoint type playing. These are good exercises to work on, you know, to get your coordination down between left right. and right hand. It's 
it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it, it's going to take me months just to learn the chord patterns, but it's just phenomenal to me that you've got them down so well that you know exactly where you're going with each phrase. I mean, it's just it's phenomenal. Oh, thank you, man. Well, I know it's taken a lot, a lot of work, and uh, yeah, sometimes I totally blow it as good as you can blow it when I'm trying to do it. I mean, I have before on stage; it's really bad. I'll play a, <clears throat> probably about one more thing. It's on my okay. hands, gonna hold it. But I want to show you this. This is really cool, I think, and something I like to play. Let's say just an open E string, right? like a B position, those three notes, okay. I'm going to play this with my E, hear that, and I come up here and note this, now that's the basic form, I want to show you what this will sound like, play various positions on the neck. sound neat and they're not really hard to do you know they're uh they're probably just uh color things is what i would call them you know there's not really a set pattern i'm playing there that would be the pattern but that's not really part of a scale or, or a scale it's just a riff you know the reason i like this stuff there again because of the tone you know the tonal quality of it and the fact that it's um, it's playing um, one chord over another, you know, okay. which you're getting, you know, like duo tones there. This is very good there again for exercise in your hands when you get really get up to speed, like. Now that's regular tuning, right? You haven't changed yeah, anything. Not at all. It just really it's sounds like it's guitar. almost an open tuning or yeah. something. Right? Now this same pattern I'm using here, for example, in bluegrass, okay, I could be playing. I'm going to go up to C. Let's say I'll play a little lead here in G, like. Okay, here's this pattern. Now, how are you getting that sound out of a G chord? It's, it's, you're just not using that first finger. You mean this the G chord? Just a basic G chord. You're just playing it with. See, I'm always. I guess I always use that first finger in my chord form. But the way you're playing it, just gives it a totally different sound than what I do. Is this, do you play like this? Well, basically, I put the two fingers on the bottom and, and I, I play it basically like that, just like that. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I'm playing, see, I'm muting the fifth string. You're muting, okay. And I play the bass and these and the remainder are on down. Okay. That's what's different. See, some of those basic chords that you do that just have that totally different sound, I just never could figure out how you got the sound out of it. Yeah, that. part of that's, you know, like if you play this, the reason I do that is because sometimes if you play this A or excuse me, B note, if you if you have a note in the G chord, right. the reason I don't play it so much and I'm playing G is because it takes away from the bottom half of the sound because okay. this low note and this low no note have a tendency to override the rest of it. Okay. So I play it like that, you know, it's just one big boom. You know, this way it's more like even sound. You know? Sometimes I slide it too like this.
really nice. Yeah. And then the D, you just basically wrap, you wrap, always wrap your thumb. Of course, you do that a lot of And even if I don't structure. hit that string, it's another reason for doing that, so you won't hit it open. You know, and do that. Right. That way, even if it's not noted, it's, it's still muted. Okay. And when you do add, it gives a little more thrust, you know. Now, do you do anything different out of a C form? I always it like that. Okay. Just a full, what I thought, what I would term a full C. Okay. Okay. Very good. That's the first thing we worked on, the swing pattern. Okay. One of the first things. down to pick it up and I didn't realize I was that close to it and just pour up to hell on my finger. Well that is I'll tell you man I love that guitar. Oh thank you. Yeah that's that cool gorgeous. Rocks. That guy's bringing uh, that one Santa Cruz back next week with a strap button on it so I can play it the artist model. That's something else I wanted to ask you about your strap button. Mm -hmm. How, did you locate it there yourself? Yeah I always put them right there. Okay. That's the strongest part of the heel. See, lots of guys will come down here and they'll put them on this plate. Right. Which is good because it goes into the wood, but the thing is, it's not good location for your strap because your strap will right. come off easier. The reason I put it here is because your strap will wrap around the neck. Okay. The of the neck. Okay. You know, I've had them here, I've had them there, and then they always pop off. You know. So you just put them on that other yeah, side of the... Yeah, always. Okay, cool. I was yeah, wondering where I was going to put one on this new guitar. Yeah, here. and I always keep a check on this end button back here. Right. Because I've had these kind, you know, to come out with the strap. You know, okay. I glued this one in. So. What do you recommend as far as picks, Richard? I mean, well, I've always used tortoise shell, but I like something that doesn't bend. So like this is very. It's a stiff pick, but the reason I use those is because of the density of them, the, the tonal quality, you know, and the speed. They're very high speed pick, but like, you know, you can't really buy them.